Dr. Fact is knocking at the door. Someone please let the man in. On the hour. Such is politics. It's a painful business. On the hour. What you mustn't do in politics is listen to people. It's a painful business. On Radio 4. Such is politics. I tell you this straight. I will not be any part of using Northern Ireland as a bargaining counter. He strutted about uh, sitting on Kuwait. I don't see France as an old lady scared of a mouse. On the hour with Christopher Morris. I'm Christopher Morris and a very good afternoon to you. Hello. Today's The Headlines. The Headlines. Angry Delore in Can Someone Get That Bloody Phone Outburst. Two-year-old fish dies at sea and dismantled Pope found sliding along road. On the hour. Plus, coming up, a palace press spokesman describes the Queen's bravery in facing up to BBC presenter Nick Ross, who had broken into her bedroom and tried to steal her backbone. She said to herself, I think I am Queen. And I've got a backbone, and my God, I'm going to keep it stiff. Meanwhile, Ross, who's been sacked, obviously, has asked the nation for understanding. There was an incident which was childish and stupid, and naturally, I regret that. Whether that is enough to be used to try and destroy a man's career and whole life is, of course, another matter. But first, the news. The Bank of England has lost the pound, plunging the financial world into turmoil this afternoon. Smarting officials say a search has been mounted and there is no need to panic. This sort of thing happens all the time, said one. It's probably been misplaced under something on somebody's desk or fallen behind the coffee machine, which hasn't been moved for a while. However, trading today has been diabolical. Many report the pound had been thin and hazy for months and the bank simply failed to heed warnings. Others link the disaster with the appearance of a strange, sexless child who was seen wandering around the square mile with an inscrutable grin. Meanwhile, the banks say they will be temporarily replacing the lost currency with sherry. On the hour, choice morsels from a broad kitchen. This is Alan Partridge with his sports desk. More racing results just in from Chep Chestershire. The 4.30 brouhaha finish. First, number three, Clerical Explosion. Second, number five, Erupted Pension. And third, number seven, Alan Beath Tonsil Boy. The going at Chep Chestershire today was flappy to amorous. Cricket. The International Cricket Championships start this evening. Earlier last week, I shared a chat with Graham Gooch and some other English cricketers in the post-match changing rooms. I'm here in the uh, changing rooms of the uh, England cricket team, and I must say it's quite a sort of close, foggy atmosphere. It's all the, the smells of uh, sportsmen uh, changing. Going in the showers there and see they're getting the getting their clothes off. There's very big blokes, it certainly is. And, oh, hey, there's Graham Gooch! Graham! Alan Partridge! Yeah, you got a few questions in, Mr Partridge. Hey, you lot, stop messing about or I'll, uh, I'll have your... Uh, you look pretty sexy, Alan. Oh, thanks a lot. I'll have your balls. <laughs> Just a bit of a joke there. Um, Graham, the gear. Tell us a bit about the gear. Um, so, well, it sort of looks funny. Well, what's this? What's this here? What's this thing here? That's this called a box. A box. All oh, right, I see. To uh, protect the old uh, nose. Just put it on yeah. my head here. Just Smith flip it on your face then. It's, uh, it's right over my nose. I don't know if you still hear me. It makes me... I, I feel a bit like Darth Vader. L Luke, may the force be with you. <laughs> it smells a bit funny. Yeah, that's, that actually goes down your trousers. That, that's both of them oh, in fact. Crap. It goes down your trousers. Down your trousers? Yeah, it protects your balls. <laughs> hey, hey, come on. You're not trying to say that's to cover the old crown jewels. That's not big enough for mine at all. Oh, no, well, let's have a look at them then. Yeah, come on. Get away. Get away. Get away. Get away. Get away. That's no bigger than a bale. Yeah, believe it, it's pretty cold in here. Oh, <laughs> there. Yeah, just give us me trousers back, all right? Come on, it's BBC property. In the shower. Oh, get away! Yeah, you're rubbish at cricket, even though you play for England. This is yeah. Th this is Alan Partridge, sports desk, finding out things that I'd rather not know about England cricketers and the fact that they're very. Very rude. On the hour, rich pickings at the media events interface. 
And the travel unit have been making some noise this morning. There are major problems for commuters on the London Underground. Apparently careless workmen have failed to tighten up some of the bolts and several stations on the Circle Line have slipped round. Paddington is now at Great Portland Street. Passengers for Monument should dismount at Barbican. And the situation has been further complicated by Mansion House, which has overtaken Blackfriars Temple and Embankment and is now just before Westminster, which is at Bayswater. Abroad. An American Treasury report says the United States will now impose sanctions to prevent further destabilization in the euro dollar trade war. On the line now from Washington is our embargo correspondent Peter O'Hanrahan. Hanrahan. Peter, what exactly is going to be done? Good evening, Chris. Uh, well, what exactly is going to be done is, is exactly the right question that we've all been asking all day, and now we've finally got the answer. And the answer is the Americans have come down very, very, very hard indeed on the European community. What are they going to be doing? They're going to be uh, imposing all manner of trade sanctions and embargoes uh, on a sliding scale of percentage points, and this could prove very costly in Brussels. So what are the exact numbers in the report? It's, it's hard to say because at various different times in the report they change the... And, and uh, what, at what page a... in the report do they mention the numbers? All, well, all the pages ov obviously tacitly refer to the numbers, but it's a sliding scale. That's what, what you have what? to understand. It slides the scale, and therefore it's very difficult to ascertain exactly what the right, Americans... Peter, Peter, Peter. The report that you've read... Yes. Have you read the report? It has certainly been read. Who's read it? Many people have read it. Have you? The question is, is not one that I consider... When did you worth... read it? At the press conference, it was handed to at, me, and I... At the press I, conference, you're given... I was given the document at the press conference, and I, I certainly read some parts of it there. What I want to know is what the Americans are going to impose. Can you tell me now, or are you about to leave? No, I can't tell you. Yes, I'm leaving. Peter, thank you very much. And you, Chris. On the hour. In news terms, it has an enormous packet. And more of that train stuff has just been coming in. Commuter chaos continues in the capital today. Station slippage has been exacerbated by vandals who are attaching loose stations to the backs of the trains. This means that several stations have run into each other, apparently. Some of them have fused, and the pressure wave has blown Turnpike Lane right out of London altogether. It's now somewhere in the middle of Bedford. Many lines are still working, though most of them on one rail only, and passengers wishing to use escalators are advised to bring their own. Uh, time for Thought for the Day now with Monsignor Treve Lopez. One of my younger brethren asked me, who do you think will be top of Division One this season, Manchester or Leeds? Ah, saith I wisely, the Lord God is top of Division One every season of our world. <laughs> I've seen your tree blow, Good to good to see him back again. And you should see you should see his hair this morning. It looks like a sort of dead mouse has landed on his head. There's been an earthquake in Corinth. The city has been devastated by a large shift in the Telemachos fault, which underlies the area. Our disaster correspondent Roger Blatt is on the line now. Roger, what now punctures the sky like the shattered teeth of some giant vanquished boxer? A line of broken tower blocks now punctures the sky like the shattered teeth of some giant vanquished boxer. A boxer whose face has been punched to pieces from the inside. Just 12 hours ago, this historic city, which since landing here this morning, I've come to regard as my home, was blissfully unaware that the mighty bank of the Telemachus Fault was about to call in its terrible loan. That bill contained not only the vast debt of destruction, not only the massive compound interest of falling buildings and cracks in the ground, but the inevitable surcharge of severed limbs, crushed bone and diabolical pain. All around me now, the air is bothered by the cries of the bereaved and injured. That is the sound of a bereaved, and this is the sound of an injured. On the hour. News of when the earth moves, even if it means having to move the earth.
Well, what exactly happens when an earthquake of this size strikes? I'm joined now in the studio by our expert, Edward Crane. Well, the essential building blocks of an earthquake are pretty much like this. Here are two tectonic plates. Here is a landmass which immediately overlies them. And this pencil is a city built on top of the landmass. Now here is what happens when the earthquake starts. First of all, the plates begin to push against each other. This causes a strain to build up. Here it is. And soon, the plates begin to chafe. The ground leaps and bucks like a dog biting an electric fence. Solid concrete is shattered. Gas pipes burst to cause explosions. And very shortly, the entire city is completely destroyed. And so, what happens to the inhabitants? Well, if the population is represented by these mice and a hole in the ground by this vacuum cleaner, then this is what happens. On the hour, three-dimensional Quakerama. And as the dust begins to settle on today's catastrophe, the air is already buzzing with recrimination. Critics are saying that much of the destruction could have been avoided. City planners are being asked to justify their decision to build a system of glass motorways and to explain why the foundations of the city's largest buildings were made of crisps. But there is a positive side to this massive natural disaster, and that is the pop singer Barry White, who's flown to Corinth to record some of the victims to give what he calls an authentic cultural stamp to his brand new record, Earthquake in Your Bed. I know you're a victim. Okay. I can see your grief. I can tell because your limp count is off. Not even. I can see your light in the bricks and the dust. That's the pop singer Barry White and some of the victims of the Corinth earthquake disaster. On the hour, the world in a tablet. And if you're worried about any relatives or friends you may know out there in Corinth, then you may wish to distract yourself by listening to Radio 4 this afternoon, when at 4.30 there's another chance to eavesdrop on the Welsh, talking about their language, life and culture. I, I remember I went to the dentist once, and he was Welsh, and uh, we, had, we had a bit of a laugh because the, uh, the drill wasn't working. Did you hear the story about the uh, bloke uh, had a threshing machine? And he got all tangled up in that, and oh, uh, yes. his, head, uh, his head come off, but uh, he managed to pick it up and run the hundred yards to the farm, and by the wonders of surgery, they sewn it back on again. No, that was in Wales, was it? Spirit. That wasn't in, uh, that wasn't in uh, Wales, that was in Ohio, in America. That's the Welsh this afternoon at 90 minutes past three, and earlier at 12.25, Brain of Britain is hosted by Robert Robinson. This week's brain is Melvin Bragg. Of which country was Victoria not the Queen, though her two predecessors had been its king? The Lake District. No, I was saying she was the Empress there, wasn't she? All right, you, the, your, your gift is God-given. All right, you didn't learn to tap down, she just learned routines. Who were the two presenters of the Channel 4 series Orchestra? Mickey Rooney <laughs> and Desmond Lynham. Which anaesthetic was first used by Sir James Young Simpson in Edinburgh? Andrew Neil, editor of the Sunday Times. What in Paris are the bateaux mouches? British, 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 British. When members of the House of Commons vote on a bill, they go into one of two division lobbies. What is the name of each of these lobbies? Uh, it's a personal contradiction in the whole environmental thing which you must come across, Jane, and I suspect you do too. No. Whereabouts in Wales will the 1992 National Garden Festival be held? Start the week first edition news series. Join us next week. Good morning. Yes, that's it.
Join Melvin Bragg and Robert Robinson this lunchtime on Radio 4. The time is just coming up to three o'clock on Sunday the 4th of June. It's eight o'clock on Tuesday the 18th of February. The headlines today, new low for GATT as euro-dollar trade war deepens. We will be featuring that story in full after the news, so it won't actually be mentioned in the bulletin in case in some way it preempts the more detailed analysis which follows, perhaps stealing the thunder of the later report by presenting a filleted version of the facts without due reference to the background details. The other headlines today, guns, numbers and the unemployed. And now with the news in full, here's the continuity announcer. Police have shot dead a man thought to be carrying a loaded weapon and holding a family of three hostage in a house in Peterborough. They have denied rumours that a replica was involved, but whilst they have shown that the gun was genuine, a search revealed that all the hostages were replicas and the house was an imitation of the sort found in any high street toy shop. The man was also false. This report from Paul Stafford. I'm sorry, we can't bring you that report at the moment. We'll... <clears throat> Mathematicians have announced the existence of a new whole number which lies between 27 and 28. We don't know why it's there or what it does, said Cambridge mathematician Dr. Hilliard Halliard. We only know that it doesn't behave properly when put into equations and that it is divisible by six, though only once. Here's our science correspondent, Nick Watkins. I'm sorry, we, uh, we don't appear to... Minimum wage! Um. The pop singer Cliff Richard has paid 25 million pounds to prevent Britain's unemployed being sold to the Japanese. The singer said he bought the nation's jobless because they belonged in England, not hanging on the wall of a foreign businessman's office. Mr. Richard's agent has promised that the assembly of drifters and layabouts will not be held in a private collection, but will be on permanent loan to Wembley Stadium, where people can go and see them at any time of the day or night. Proceeds of which will go to Mr. Hapke at a cost of approximately 50 pence per head per month. I'm sorry about the noise. I think there's a workman next door with a drill. You're listening to the sound of On the Hour. Coming up over the next page, outcry over Derbyshire Police's controversial anti-drugs campaign. I know these kids take drugs, and if they don't stop it, I will kill them. Plus, an eyewitness account from the man at the centre of events. What's your reaction to the whole media merry-go-round? Well, I'm just uh, enjoying the ride. Do you want to elaborate? I'm enjoying the ride on the media merry-go-round. That's my reaction. News. And it's been announced this morning that Prince Harry has split up. The seven-year-old had been experiencing increasing bodily disquiet for some time. There were rumoured to be irreconcilable differences between several of his limbs, and the secret became public when he could no longer hold it together and flew to pieces in front of reporters today. The Queen is said to be very sad. On the hour. The Queen may be sad, but she certainly doesn't drive her own car. And even if she were happy, would she put her foot firmly on the brakes? Brakes is what on the hour does to the mould, so it's been said, and mould is coloured green. Green is the colour of Rosie May's desk. Green desk. Green news update from me, Rosie May. Teenage girls' vests. Teenage girls' vests can be used to keep the woodland creatures of Romania warm this winter. So says Philip Griffiths of Solihull in the West Midlands. Mr Griffiths is appealing for enough teenage girls' vests to fill an entire bag. These will be worn by orphaned mice, stoats and otters in Romania. But the vests must not be washed as detergents could distress a small vole, insists Philip. Green desk. Doctors have magical healing powers that have lain undiscovered for thousands of years. Apparently a patient's health can be be improved without recourse to so-called modern medicines by simply rubbing an ordinary family GP against an open sore or area of infection. 
And now it's time for a roundup of the news. And we heard two weeks ago exactly what a roundup of the news is. Surprisingly enough, the definition hasn't changed. Though, if you're still in the dark, phone 071 580 and ask. Comprehensive news troll. February and more trouble for President Boris Yeltsin as the Ukraine declared its own independent laws of physics. Under the new legislation, only natural-born Ukrainians were granted the right to have density, speed was calculated to equal boiling point over height, and friction was abolished, which caused increased mortality around hills, but meant that Ukrainians could glide over hundreds of miles with just one push. Meanwhile, in Kiev, over 300 protesters were injured in gravity riots. Oversight. Back home, a new battle was developing over the leadership of the Labour Party. John Smith's favourable rating was largely due to the way he countered accusations that he was too old for the post and should make way for the younger Brian Gould. I can kick his butt. I can beat everybody in the world today. You ask me how, why do I think I can beat a guy that's 28 years old or 30 years old, whatever he is. I can beat anybody. 90 Degree Newsarama. On the 3rd of April, fans of BBC Radio 4 were shocked to hear the continuity announcer Brian Perkins resign during a live transmission. I have lost my freedom, my home, my family, my daily life, and I want them back. And more tragedy on the 24th. The deepening crisis in Yugoslavia finally took its toll on chief negotiator Lord Carrington. After disappearing for three days, he was found slumped on a bar stool in Dubrovnik, his sobriety cruelly eroded by the enormity of events. I think it's time to get tough with everybody. I mean, it isn't just President Milosevic. <coughs> Croatian irregulars are crossing the borders from Croatia. And, and the Muslims, I think, are being pretty provocative. And the JNI are behaving very badly. I mean, it's all of them, as always. <laughs> Well, it's in the nature of news that it happens all the time, and it's happening right now. Scientists in the United States have discovered that today is the two billionth anniversary of space. This intriguing documentary popped up on our American Wire a few moments ago. It includes revealing glimpses of what makes a spaceman and how he sets about conquering the sky. It's introduced by CBN's Mr. Science, Chesney Mooncalf. <laughs> The blind infinity of space. Its silence resonates through the known vestiges of mankind. Yet we must only pause in wonder at those from our star who have bravely touched its aroma. Such first of these are astronauts Campbell Forbeam and Hudson Deck, a manned crew on board the 1972 Apollo Mission 5. Let them paint the palette of space in their own words. So when you see the Earth kind of like you're in space and you see the earth uh, it's very much like a boiled sweet like I was very worried about um, about you know going to toilet in a small space and uh, I had an itch on my nose and I couldn't scratch it yeah. in the helmet I mean from where I was sitting on the way out I couldn't actually see the earth um, no there was only one guy the chief astronaut he, he had the window seat I was in the locker room. But our heroes are common men and women whose hero suits are simple skirts and ties, not helmets. Those on the ground who, in a sense, stayed behind to man the terminals that kept that soaring dream alive with correct coordinates. Bill Stanford and Bryony Bortello were data scientists on the first NASA projects. What we, for example, are doing at the moment is we're taking tennis balls with a hole drilled in the center and then we're putting it at the top of a piece of string and watching it slide to the bottom. This shows, amongst other things, that gravity is still largely to blame for most things. I've been conducting personal experiments at home with my own beach ball. I'd like a bigger one, so we're talking to NASA. We'd like to build the biggest beach ball ever to see what would happen if we put it on a beach. We're simply biding time at the moment by filling large balloons with water and dropping them from the top of large buildings 
attempting to hit passers-by below. What, what I realized was for every large balloon filled with water that I dropped from the top of a building, of every six or seven pedestrians, I could hit about two. I, lo I logged this, reported it to NASA, and um, I'm waiting to hear a reply. Being in space is like reading a book with blank pages. You value people and yourself a lot more. No, 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 no. I found that. You found that. I found I, I valued myself. I mean, I, I found. Yeah, I I found I valued you a lot yeah. more. Yeah, uh, I didn't value you though. No, but that was because of the. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. As man sits upon a new rock. He can only gaze back at the nearby village he calls Earth and say to himself, that which was once what was is now no longer only. It is but the first, and here am I on the second. How many more for us there are, are over there in vast, beautiful space. You just want to sleep, really. Yeah. The Pursuit of Space, an information reel from AstroData, an arm of NASA. Well, that's space for you, and you may be interested to know that during that report, everybody here was certainly stopping what they were doing and generally putting things down. Closing music. And just time to felch out a few of tomorrow's headlines. Bombs away leopard throws noose round police. That's the Telegraph. Today, right with serial lawn thief was Archbishop, says Mr. Duggan. You may be interested to know 12 across in the Times crossword is Son of Mussolini invades dress shop, while the Surrey briefer pull in the crowds with Chard Sloth stumbles out of sandwich, and everything's all right in America again today. That's in the International Herald Tribune. That's it. I'm Christopher Morris, and wherever you are, I'm going to find you.